Hey folks, Sam Luce here. Thanks so much for checking the video out. I want to take a look at how we can solve latency issues in Logic Pro. There's nothing more annoying than getting system overload messages or getting a delay in your recording when you're trying to track something. There's a few different ways that we can combat these issues and some are simpler than you think. So first of all, I want to take a look at one that's blaringly obvious, but you don't need to go menu diving to actually feel the benefits of. So this first one is the actual plugins themselves because plugins can cause latency. If you have particularly CPU intensive plugins, then they're gonna cause an issue. So in this session, I've got just one audio track and one software instrument track and a couple of plugins there. So latency arises because basically your computer can't cope with what's going on. It needs to take time to think about it. That's what the latency is. That's the, the kind of delay when we say something through a microphone or play something, the computer needs to think about it and then it plays it back. And plugins can cause real issues with this. If we take a look at virtual tape machines from Slate Digital, first of all, if we just hover over the plugin, it will tell us what the delay is. So in this instance, just one instance of this plugin has got 1,722 samples of delay. So that's not a massive issue because we know that if we're working at 44.1 kilohertz, then we've got 44.1 thousand samples per second. So this is a fraction of a second. In fact, if we take a look at the calculator, we do 44.1 thousand divided by 1728, we get 25 and a half. So we're gonna need 25 or 26 instances of this plugin before we get one second of latency. So that's a consideration, but it's not really a consideration until we have you know more than a few that are actually gonna create that latency. But if you take a look at a plugin like Ozone 11, Currently, this is giving me 24,078 samples of latency, so half a second. So this instance of Ozone is absolutely stacked. So I've got one of everything here, so it, it, it's not really a real-world situation. But you can see how having so many plugins on there, all giving you a little bit of latency, are really going to contribute to you hearing that delay. Now, Logic does have a way of dealing with this. If we go up to Logic Pro, Settings, Audio, and then go across to general, we have plugin latency compensation. So by default, this is actually set to off, but we can set it to all or audio and software instrument tracks. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to try and kind of compensate for some of that latency by kind of playing stuff before it plays it to you. So it's going to apply this plugin latency compensation. It's going to calculate exactly how much latency is added by these plugins and then say, okay, I need to play it a little bit beforehand. And you can do that to audio and software instruments or everything. So all buses, all inputs, all absolutely everything. Um, software instruments, you've got to think of it in terms of the sound is already loaded into the computer. So when you hit a note, the sound is already there. So you've only really got the output latency. A microphone is being recorded in and then out again as well. So this is kind of a round trip thing, which we'll get onto in a moment. Um, and when we put a compensation on for all, this is going to calculate what it needs to compensate for. In my experience, and probably everyone else's experience, this is not the be all and end all. This is, does not mean that you're gonna get no latency whatsoever because the power of your computer is going to play a factor in that as well. Um, we've got a low latency mode here as well, which we're gonna come on to in a moment. All of this tries to kind of counteract the, the latency introduced by plugins and those sample values that we just saw. So that's the first thing I want to get out of the way. Your plugins are probably going to be the problem. If your computer is relatively new and it works normally kind of mixing wise, then your plugins are probably going to be the problem. I'm going to show you how you can solve that issue in a moment, but let's take a look at some of the settings that we can apply, some of the settings we can change in Logic, which are going to help this. So if we go up to our menu, Logic Pro settings, audio, there's a few settings in here that I wanna talk about. Now my input and output device here are ScreenFlick. This is the software that I'm using to capture the audio and the screen here. Um, we've got the IO buffer size and we've got our round trip. So at the moment, our latency is just 11.6 milliseconds. Essentially, this is the, the round trip. This is how long it takes to come in and then come out again. 11.6, not a massive issue. Our buffer size, this is, relatively misunderstood. So a lower buffer size means less delay. So at the moment, I've got a buffer size of 256 samples and it's 11.6. If I take that down to 32, it's gonna go down at 1.5. If I bring that up to 1024, it's gonna go up massively. So the IO buffer size 
is basically how long your computer is allowed to think about something before spitting it out again. Your buffer is just that, it's a buffer. So if you have a second of buffer, then you input something, the computer thinks about it for a second, and then it plays it back. So this is just the, the standalone latency. This is just the latency that your interface, your computer and logic is basically taking up um, just when it's in, in standard mode. As soon as you start bringing plugins into that, those are added onto that. So at the moment it's 46.4 milliseconds, but if you think of before when we had a 25th of a second with Virtual Tape Machine, once you start stacking those up, you're adding those onto the latency. So in general, when you're recording, having a lower buffer size, as low as your computer can cope with, is gonna be the key thing to, to apply. That's gonna solve 99% of the issues in hearing a delay. When you're mixing, you wanna have that as high as possible because you have different issues when you're recording or mixing. When you're recording, the kind of system overloads and the latency issues are to do with delay, how long it takes for the computer to think about something. You input something, then it outputs it later, so you can't quite record in time because something sounds delayed. When you're mixing, you don't have to worry about that. The latency is really only how long it takes before it plays back after you hit the space bar, after you hit go. So in general, IO buffer size as long as possible for when you're mixing. When you're recording, if you can get it to 32, great. If you can get it to 64, cool. 128 will probably do. 256 might be okay in some instances. What you've got to think about though, is that 256 is gonna be an issue if you've got then more plugins on top of that as well. So it's all gonna to contribute to it. The rest of these settings here, I'm not gonna to get too deep into it, but a lot of these are really dealing with mixing. So for example, um, summing is all about how the the tracks are being summed together and how they're all coming together as one. That's not really going to make a massive difference to the overall tracking latency. Your process buffer range, again, is to do with mixing. Really, your recording latency is to do with this I.O. buffer size. And remember as well that this is all relative to your sample rate. If you're recording at 44.1, then having the 1024 samples is going to be X amount of a second. But if you're recording at twice the sample rate, then those samples are going twice as fast. So it's gonna be half as much of that. So your resulting latency is actually going to be better if you've got a sample rate that is higher, but only if your computer can handle it. If your computer is working harder because it's at a higher sample rate, then it's maybe gonna be better, but only it kind of gets to that peak where it's like, okay, I can't take any more. So in general, best to keep that IO buffer size as low as possible and standard, we're kind of working at 44.1, maybe 48. So that's gonna be the general area we're working in. But how can we actually make it so that some settings we apply are going to make a difference to the latency? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. So first of all, if you've got virtual instruments running, if you've got software instruments that are running a load of samples, anything like that, then we can freeze those tracks. And you can also do this to audio tracks if you've got a load of plugins on them that are causing an issue. Basically, if you're recording and you're getting latency, all the tracks that you're not doing anything to and all the tracks that you're not changing plugins on, you can freeze them and you can make it so that that's essentially taking a snapshot. It's not running through all the plugins all the time. It's kind of like bouncing it in place, but not showing you that it's bouncing it in place. It's just bouncing that track and then just playing back exactly what it sounds like through the plugins without having to go through the plugins every time. We can do that by control clicking on one of the, the track headers, going to track header components, and then going down to freeze. And then we get this little freeze symbol here. So once we click the freeze symbol, it's going to highlight it blue. And when we press play, it's essentially going to freeze that whole thing. So if I just bring in a loop here, you're gonna see exactly what's going on. So before I can actually play this, it's going to have to freeze it. And this is relative to the cycle range. So the cycle range is where your track ends essentially. As standard, this is gonna be probably quite long. So as you press play on this and it starts to freeze it, it's gonna be for the entirety of the cycle range. So you maybe wanna bring that back down a little bit just before you actually start to freeze it. So we press play and it's just gonna freeze that track. It's gonna go for the entirety of the cycle range just to see if there's anything else there. And I've got a load of plugins on here that are just kind of as standard come with this, this disco beat preset and it's frozen them all. You can see you can't actually change them because it's got the little freeze icon on it. If you click it, 
it's going to say, okay, it's only going to load those as it actually needs them because we've frozen it. So it doesn't actually need them at the moment. You can then unfreeze and you can go into it and you can make the changes and then freeze it again if you want to. But that's a great way of freeing up some resources and making it so that you can actually record without latency again because it's not running through all those plugins, which as we saw, are going to increase the latency. Another great thing to do on larger sessions is to go into low latency mode. So low latency recording mode, I've got it up here. It just looks like a little kind of dial, volume dial, whatever. If you control click up the top, customize control bar and display, then you can see it just here. You can bring it on and off. And what that's gonna do is a few things. It's gonna make it so that you can record in low latency first and foremost. You'll see on larger sessions, it's actually going to kind of orange out or gray out some of the plugins and some of the buses that it thinks are including a load of latency, that are bringing a load of latency into the mix. So you'll see I've got these plugins here, these reverbs and the delay. Previously they were grayed out, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but at the moment these are giving a significant amount of latency. So 260 samples, Symphony 32, not too much. And BX delay, that's actually not giving any latency just on that one. If it doesn't show you anything, that it's not giving you anything. FGX2 is giving us 2,855 samples. So anything that's got like a limiter in it, where it's doing a look ahead function, that will typically give you a load of latency there as well. So on larger sessions, when you've got any of these buses involved, then it's going to make it so you can't hear those. On low latency mode, it'll kind of orange them out. This can be annoying if you're doing it for like vocals where you can't hear a reverb, when maybe in that instance, you want to pop the reverb onto the channel as an insert. But I'm going to come on to that in just a moment. The reason that these are grayed out is because they're not being used. And we can make it so that any plugins that aren't actually being used in a session can be essentially taken out of the mix. So if we go to File, Project Settings, and then go to General, Opening Project, only load plugins needed for project playback. So if you've got a load of tracks that are in the project but not actually being used, which can happen sometimes, then the clicking this means that it's gonna gray them out. In this instance, I've got no audio on this track, so it's said, okay, it's got nothing on there, so I don't actually need to think about the plugins. Once you take that off and then load the session up again, it's gonna have them active. But generally, I like to have that there, only load them when they're needed, because it means that I've not got a load of plugins that are essentially useless, taking up a load of the processing power and adding latency to the proceedings. Now, I mentioned having reverbs and things as an insert before. Generally, don't do it. If you've got a CPU intensive plugin, like a lot of reverbs tend to be, then you're typically gonna be sending like a load of vocals to it or a load of instruments to one. And a good rule of thumb is to have all time-based effects on sends. So anything that's reverb, delay, anything like that, put it on a send and then send your instrument to that reverb and then send it by a certain amount. You can see how if you've got four, maybe even two vocal tracks and you've got a really CPU intensive reverb, then that's gonna stack up, that's gonna add up and it's all gonna pile on top of each other and increase that latency, which we just don't want. So a few ways there that you can stop that latency when you're recording, it really can be the death of a recording session if you've got that slapback delay when you don't want it, when you're trying to sing or play a guitar line or even worse on drums, it can be an absolute nightmare. There's a few tips there to really cope with that. First of all, it's gonna be dealing with the plugins. If you've got something which is not really like absolutely pivotal to the sounds, then just get rid of it. When you're recording, you can pop it back on again when you're mixing, but that is the number one thing that is going to really affect your, your processing and the latency within your session. Secondly would be taking a look at your buffer size. Take it to as low as possible for when you're recording. If you can't get it as low as possible because your computer's just kind of falling over, then those next steps in the chain, taking off the plugins and going to low latency mode are gonna help you as well. It's not a one-stop shop. It's not just like a one setting is gonna solve this. It's all down to how fast your computer is and how many plugins you've got in the session, how you've got your IO buffer size set and essentially what you're trying to do. But hopefully that's helped you out and you're gonna get a lot less latency in your next sessions. I'll see you again soon. Take care.